Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Wednesday, October 6th, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we begin by reading the second half of Psalm 91. Because you have made the Lord, my refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place, no harm will come to you. No plague will come near your tent. For he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent. Because he has his heart set on me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. Yesterday, Moses recounted how the Lord gave to his people the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. Today, Moses is going to continue by recounting the people's response. The Lord spoke these commands in a loud voice to your entire assembly from the fire, cloud, and total darkness on the mountain. He added nothing more. He wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. All of you approached me with your tribal leaders and elders when you heard the voice from the darkness and while the mountain was blazing with fire. You said, look, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that God speaks with a person, yet he still lives. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For who out of all humanity has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the fire, as we have, and lived? Go near and listen to everything the Lord our God says. Then you can tell us everything the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard your words when you spoke to me. He said to me, I have heard the words that these people have spoken to you. Everything they have said is right. If only they had such a heart to fear me and keep all my commands always, so that they and their children would prosper forever. Go and tell them, return to your tents. But you stand here with me, and I will tell you every command, the statutes and ordinances, you are to teach them, so that they may follow them in the land I am giving them to possess. Be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You are not to turn aside to the right or the left. Follow the whole instruction the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live, prosper, and have a long life in the land you will possess. This is the command, the statutes and ordinances, the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, so that you may follow them in the land you are about to enter and possess. Do this so that you may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life by keeping all his statutes and commands I am giving you, your son and your grandson, and so that you may have a long life. Listen, Israel, and be careful to follow them so that you may prosper and multiply greatly because the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Listen, Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These words that I am giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates. As we continue reading through Matthew's gospel, we continue to see how Jesus showed himself to be the son of God in the way he healed people, forgave their sins, and called people to follow him. So Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Just then, some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, have courage, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the scribes said to themselves, he's blaspheming. Perceiving their thoughts, Jesus said, 
why are you thinking evil things in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he told the paralytic, get up, take your stretcher, and go home. So he got up and went home. When the crowds saw this, they were awestruck and gave glory to God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was reclining at the table in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now, when he heard this, he said, it is not those who are well who need a doctor, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. Then John's disciples came to him saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often? But your disciples do not fast. Jesus said to them, can the wedding guests be sad while the groom is with them? The time will come when the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one patches an old garment with unshrunk cloth, because the patch pulls away from the garment and makes the tear worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins burst, the wine spills out, and the skins are ruined. No, they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. Our writing for today comes from the early church manual on church life called the Didache. This section is called the Lord's teaching to the heathen by the 12 apostles. There are two ways, one of life and one of death. And between the two ways, there is a great difference. Now this is the way of life. First, you must love God who made you. And second, your neighbor as yourself. Now, whatever you want people to refrain from doing to you, you must not do to them. What these maxims teach is this. Bless those who curse you and pray for your enemies. Moreover, fast for those who persecute you. For what credit is it to you if you love those who love you? Is that not the way the heathen act? But you must love those who hate you, and then you will make no enemies. Abstain from carnal passions. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other two, and you will be perfect. If someone forces you to go one mile with him, go along with him for two. If someone robs you of your overcoat, coat, give him your suit as well. If someone deprives you of your property, do not ask for it back. You could not get it back anyway. Give to everybody who begs from you and ask for no return. For the Father wants his own gifts to be universally shared. Happy is the man who gives as the commandment bids him, for he is guiltless. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Jesus Sinners Does Receive. We deserve but grief and shame, yet his words, rich grace revealing, pardon, peace, and life proclaim. Here our ills have perfect healing. Firmly in these words believe, Jesus Sinners Does Receive. And we pray. Almighty and most merciful God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to seek and to save the lost. Graciously open our ears and our hearts to hear his call and to follow him by faith, that we may feast with him forever in his kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.